Hello my amazing artists. Welcome back to Art with Mrs. Knowles. We are going to be making a project that I thought was super fun today. We're going to be doing an amazing ice cream sundae. How cool is that? You're going to come up with your own ice cream sundae. Whatever you think should be on it or whatever you love. You can see I went a little bit crazy with different kinds of ice cream. Um, but what I'm going to do is show you the basic how to do it and then you're going to add your own flair and your own creativity to it. Are you ready? Okay. Okay, so you can see my ice cream sundae a little bit more up close now. And you can see I have mine in a bowl, but that's kind of up to you what you do. All different kinds of ice cream. I even added a little cookie. And you know those little rolly things that are like cookies? I added those too. I'm not sure what those are called. All right, let's get started. <clears throat> Put that off to the side. We are gonna start with a pencil. You'll also need a Sharpie if you have one. If you don't, not a big deal. And you will need something to color with. All right. So I'm using a big paper because I like going big, but you can use any si size of paper. White is gonna work best, but that's up to you. Okay, I'm gonna start on the bottom third of my paper, and we're gonna make a bowl down here to hold your ice cream. So I'm just gonna use my pencil and draw a curved line going all the way across. I'm just gonna curve this edge a little bit and come down and come back up. It's kind of like a smiley face, huh? So this is the bowl part. And I'm gonna make a little stand, but you can make yours however you want to. Okay, so now I have the shape of my bowl, right? And we made it curved so that it looks more 3D. So we're showing the art element of form, right? Okay, so once you're done with that part, I'm gonna move my paper up so you can see. We're gonna start with the ice cream part. So for the ice cream part, what I did was I just started adding some rainbow lines all over the place. And you can see that my lines are not actually touching because I'm gonna draw kind of the bottom of the ice cream layer. You know when you have a scoop of ice cream, there's like a, I don't know, it's like a little part underneath it from the scooper. Looks like a little ruffle. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna do one more scoop. One more scoop. And I wanna add some other things to it as well. Okay, so you got a bunch of rainbow lines. So now we're gonna start, I'm gonna start bottom to top, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm just adding like a little ruffly line at the bottom. And then you could also add a line going across if you want. Now my bowl is full of ice cream, as you can tell. So under here is gonna be ice cream too. So I'm just gonna draw a line going up to there because I know that that's part of my ice cream. So the line's going across. So now's the time when you want to fill in the spaces. So I know that I want to have a spoon sticking out, so I'm going to draw a handle like that which means it overlapped there so I'm just gonna erase that part of the ice cream and I also I think I'm gonna do a little cookie over here which now since I know that's gonna be a cookie now I can start to go in and add some more filler scoops just to fill in the space so I'm going behind, that's called overlapping. When you 
go behind something. So I'm just kind of making it curved to look like a scoop. There's probably a scoop there. Oh, I forgot the line there. And I think I need something up here. Okay, once I've got all my scoops done, I'm going to add some um, chocolate sauce or whatever kind of sauce onto here because ice cream sundaes usually have some kind of chocolate or caramel. So I'm just doing kind of a curved line so it looks like it's melting on the ice cream. Now is a good time to add any of your extra stuff that you want. Like on my original drawing, I added a few strawberries. Um, you could do some drips of ice cream. So think about that too. Okay, but you should have your basic design done. So now once your basic design is done, you're gonna use your Sharpie and you're just gonna trace all of your lines. All right, I have my Sharpie all traced, I think. So now I am going to erase my pencil lines just to make it look nice and neat. All right, everything is erased so it's nice and neat and I'm ready to start adding some color. You can color this however you want to, of course. Colored pencils would be great, watercolors, even crayons. Okay, I'm gonna show you a little trick that I found that if you do not have paint, but you want it to look like you painted, you can use markers. Now they do have to be water soluble markers. That means um, it might say washable on it. These Mr. Sketch markers are great. They don't say washable, but they work. Um, so what you're gonna do for this is you're gonna choose a color and then you're just gonna go around the edge of the shape using that color. So I'm going to show you with my bowl first. So down here at my bowl, I'm going to use some blue. It's going to make my bowl kind of look like it's made of glass. And I'm just going to carefully go all the way around my Sharpie. Now Sharpie is a permanent marker, right? So the reason I chose to use Sharpie when I was tracing is because I'm going to add some water to this marker and because the Sharpie is permanent it won't move, right? And I'm going to do this bottom part and I'm also going to put it on these lines that I made black lines Okay, so now starts the magic. I'm gonna take my paintbrush and my water and just dip your paintbrush in the water, get it very wet. And then you're just gonna start to add water. You see how it's coming out from the marker? Kinda cool, huh? So I'm just painting right over the marker but I'm also being careful. I don't want the blue to go outside here. So I'm trying to keep the color on the inside of my bowl, not my background. But if you make a mistake and it goes on the background, that's okay, right? We all make mistakes. Chances are, if you color in your background, nobody will notice, right? There's always a way to fix a mistake. Okay. 
Now, because I want this to be to look kind of like glass, I'm gonna keep the middle of it white. And I'm just adding the water just to the edges. So that it kind of looks like it's shining. But you can see I can add a few more lines. I've got enough blue on my paintbrush. All right, I'm gonna wash my paintbrush off. And I'm gonna get ready to do some more colors. So let's say you wanted some to have some chocolate ice cream. All right, actually, no, I'm gonna do chocolate for the topping. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Go around the edge. Just try and keep your color inside. And if it, you know, if it's not quite perfect, it'll be fine. Nobody will notice, I promise. All right, so since I want this whole thing to look like it's chocolate, I'm gonna wash my brush off, make sure there's no more blue on it. And then I'm gonna start adding some water very carefully. Ooh, look at that color. Now once in a while you'll find a color, even though your markers say that they're washable or water soluble, you'll find a color it doesn't work as well for. I found a color um, when I was doing my example for you, the pink color wasn't working very well for me. So for the pink, I just ended up coloring the whole thing with my pink marker because it just did not want to spread. So, okay, so there's the two different ways that you can use the water soluble marker. And when you're done, it's gonna look something like this. Now you can see after I painted, with my marker, I went through, I actually had a white marker and I added where I thought um, it would be shiny, like on my syrup on top. Um, strawberries are usually kind of shiny. So I added some little white marks to look like um, the light hitting it, right? Like a reflection. So I would love to see what you guys come up with. I can't wait. I think that you can get very creative with this project, right? Okay, I will see you guys later. Bye-bye.